Arby, have you ever had Pepsi? Hi, I'm Rec Dugs. I am what the kids call salty. This is a this is a tough video to make. Uh, as most of you know, I'm a big fan of the TV series Utopia. No, not that Utopia. The British drama Utopia. You'll remember in my Utopia video, I was actually cautiously optimistic about this remake. I believe Gillian Flynn is a very talented writer, and I believe she can make something different but in the same vein as the original Utopia. I didn't think it would be as good as the original. To be honest, I was completely resigned to it, most definitely being worse. But I was confident that the show would have enough new or different material to make it an interesting viewing experience on its own. Well, let's just say I'm a big dumbass. I am stupid, small brain, smooth brain, fucking idiot. In my original video, I said I know it's an inherent reaction to hearing about an American remake to be disgusted, and then attempted to quell those fears. I am horrified to say that this is one of the most American, American remakes I've ever seen. What do I mean by American as a description of its presentation? Well... The series is very loud, very overacted, and extremely handholdy. They completely disregard the intelligence of the audience in favour of spelling everything out for you. These traits were certainly not something I expected to see in a remake of a series known for being intelligent, subtle, and grounded. This is not my only problem with the presentation, but I want to take a moment on the spelling everything out for you note. This persists through the small scale and the large scale of the narrative. On the small scale, characters will literally state out loud the last thing that happened, like if someone gets murdered, someone will have to say, you just murdered them. You murdered her. If someone gets bitten, they'll say, she just bit me. She bit me. It's not enough to show a character taking medication for an illness, you have to show them having a full fucking episode while taking the medication. Just in case you don't get that taking medication implies the character has an illness, they don't trust that you can follow what happens on screen so they make everything painfully obvious. The only way they know how to show someone is happy about something is for them to scream and yell about how great what just happened is. Instead of impressive, subtle performances that you need to be tuned in to notice, We have this. Wow, hard hitting stuff. And by hard hitting, I mean they're hitting you hard over the head with it. He's horrified by his actions. Do you get it? Do you get that? Oh, he's, oh, he's super horrified. Instead of a haunting scene of Wilson Wilson worrying about his dad after being tortured, we have, um... They took out my eye! Oh my with a spoon! Oh Jessica Hyde, save me! Shut the fuck up. Look, you need to shut him up! She killed him. In the head! With an axe! Wowee. And here I was thinking the grounded nature of Utopia was its strength. Clearly it just needed more people yelling out their lines. It feels like the show was designed to be something you could follow even if you weren't looking at the screen. If you're expecting your audience to be on their phone the whole time, then I guess these are decent choices. On a slightly larger scale, they over explain things that would be extremely obvious to anyone with half a functioning brain. Early on, Arby and... Rod come into this room to kill everyone who has seen Utopia. This is effectively their version of the opening scene of the original Utopia, only they use injections instead of gas, and it happens about half an hour into the episode. I remember thinking while watching this, I wonder if by the end of the scene they'll just go, actually it was poison, you're going to die! But it actually came slightly later. Jessica Hyde enters the room, and inexplicably one of them hasn't died yet, and she's like, they poisoned us with injections. It's like they expected us to see a room full of dead bodies and be like, huh, I wonder if something killed them after they got those injections. Because I mean, those guys said it wasn't poison and they seem pretty trustworthy. So uh, unless they say otherwise, I'm gonna assume they all overdosed on heroin after they left the room. The show didn't trust us to see that they got Grant's fingerprints in the first episode and that's obviously what's on these gloves because they have a kid go, what's that? And he's like, they're fingerprints. And you'd think they'd stop there because even the slowest members of the audience would have figured it out by now. But then he's like, how did you get them? And he's like, well, kids touch lots of stuff. And again, you'd think they'd stop there, but nope. How did you get them? He touched a bird. I mean, it's very forward thinking of the show to be totally accessible to people with no eyes. 
and on the large scale of the narrative, they explain the mystery way too early. I cannot explain quite how uncompelling it is to watch scene after scene of Michael trying to figure out what has already been directly explained to us by the villains. There's not enough time, patient A, to have spread this from city to city. It's like it's being delivered. Demanding that he personally conduct the field test for his vaccine. Oh my God. Thomas, we can't have Michael there, man. He could blow this whole thing up. Yeah. If he gets a blood sample, we have real He was supposed problems. to study the sample of flu we sent him, conclude it was his flu, and then sound the victory bell Yes. For Wait, something is wrong here. She just said almost word for word what Andrew Katz said to me. There were narrative. Poor, poor girl, sad face. Hashtag Daddy Dale was a genius, but the dude had a flame out. So get on your hustle, go ham, go home, right? So let's do this, I want this trending in five minutes. Have fun and get to work. Dale and whoever else are killing children intentionally. And our story is not gonna hold up to serious scrutiny. We can't withstand all this media attention. I'll handle Dr. Light. You hang tight. Something the original did so well was planning out when and what exactly to show us of the behind the scenes of the quote unquote villains, as so they could build characters that would come to serve larger interpersonal roles with the main characters and display the lengths the network will go to as well as their degree of control. In this new series we spend so much time with the villains that we pretty much know their entire plan, bar what's in the vaccine, by like episode 3. And don't forget, this new series is 8 55 minute episodes as opposed to the 6 50 minute episodes of the original. So you have nearly the entire runtime of the original series left after you've learned the mystery. It is intensely boring to watch a mystery thriller with no mystery. What show did you watch? Like how did you watch Utopia and think, I don't really like the moments where I don't know the full context of why things are happening yet, so we need things to be explained before the mystery is introduced because otherwise people will just be confused. Also, did anyone else call what was going on with Colleen, like right from the fucking start? Like, I don't know what it was, but just from the first scene she was in, I called where this was going. Was it just her performance? I don't know. Anyway, uh, we've established that I believe it's hand-holdy and loud, but is its narrative consistency good regardless? No, even with the terrible, oversimplified and over-explained story, there is an alarming amount of inconsistencies. I'll start with just how oversimplified it is. In the original they showed lots of interesting and in-depth social engineering in order to get the public to organically believe what they want them to. In this they literally go, Hey, I'm a little girl and this vaccine works. Make sure to pressure the FDA to release it immediately. Don't do any further testing, please. It's super safe, I promise. They hit that note multiple times. I urge every parent in the country to get their child this vaccine before it's too late. Tell us about the vaccine! How can parents get this vaccine? But keep up the pressure. Tell the FDA to free the vaccine. Christy Love is producing the vaccine right now! And all we need is the FDA's approval to let us give it to you! Instead of each cog in the machine of the network only knowing what they need to know and being manipulated and blackmailed into doing things they don't know the full context of, this new series literally has rooms full of people ready on a moment's notice to participate in this conspiracy. Hey yo, so this guy died and we need to make a fake backstory for him, which we inexplicably didn't do before now, even though we knew he'd be in the public eye. Hey yo, room full of people with phones, can you all tweet the exact same story about how this guy killed himself because he was probably jealous or something? This is definitely something we needed to hire a bunch of people to sit in the same room to do. This is definitely more secure than using bots. Crying emoji, eggplant emoji, laugh cry emoji, truck emoji, emoji grim, grim reaper, reaper emoji, emoji, crying cat, cat emoji. emoji. This is a baby's idea of how social engineering works. Sorry, I'm just taking a moment to, to process this wall. All right. It's just completely ignoring the idea in the original that there could be an organization that could find ways of making things happen in such a way that nobody knew what was really going on, not even those who were involved in making it happen. So many more questions get brought up when you have people whose specific jobs it is to stand in a room and fucking tweet. It is bizarre to me that someone could take the blueprint of the original Utopia and change things about it to make it less effective and make less sense, even in scenes where it was otherwise identical to scenes from the original. 
original. Like Wilson Wilson escaping after getting tortured. I know these are a lot of comparisons to the original and I will judge the series on its own merits. Uh, I just think these are important comparisons to make because it's not just that the scenes are kind of shit, it's that they needlessly change things about an existing blueprint in order to make it more shit. Like it took more effort to make this a bad scene than it would have to make it a good scene. The torture itself already has some dumb stuff. Instead of Arby and Lee working as a team with one torturing and one asking the question, it's just Arby doing both. Instead of having the torture set be something that Lee brings about in the bag, making it personal and intimidating, they just kind of impromptu find salt and bleach in a spoon in the room. Instead of having four levels of torture, giving the scene great pacing and giving us a chance to see what Wilson is thinking as he tries to come up with lies to get them to stop, there's only three levels. And Wilson responds, I promise I don't know every time they ask. But the bit I want to focus on is how they only did the torture to one eye. I cannot explain what they thought this would do to the scene. I can't imagine they thought this would make it better somehow. But what it is successful in doing is making the next part of the scene make no sense. In the original there's this great bit where Lee leaves to have a fag, which gives Wilson the chance to escape from his handcuffs and presumably feel around in his blind state looking for a weapon. When Lee comes back, Wilson has found a gun, but is too blind to get a shot on Lee. In the remake, their Lee equivalent, Rod, doesn't leave the bunker, he just starts monologuing. Which means that when Wilson Wilson escapes, he lunges straight for the gun and points it, and then the same scene Previs follows. But if only one eye is inhibited, why can't he see? And if he can't see, how did he find the gun so fast? Like we're meant to believe that he has good enough sight to find the gun immediately in this dingy bunker, but not enough sight to see Rod? And similarly, while it takes several days for Wilson to start regaining sight in the original, pretty much as soon as he's out of the bunker, he can see just fine again. These may seem like nitpicks, but the cohesion of this entire scene is completely broken from these changes. If you're going to make changes to an already great scene, would you not first take the time to understand why the scene was like that in the first place? Like there's a reason the original has the main characters meet Jessica Hyde in the same instance the audience does. Because having her introduction be to some absolute rando just looks dumb. Why is she telling this person she's Jessica Hyde? By the time we first hear Arby say the iconic line, where is is Jessica Hyde? We have already met Jessica Hyde. Our first introduction to Arby and Lee isn't that phenomenal scene from the original series. It's a random scene of Arby complaining about being late and Rod bragging about his sick car that doesn't work. 74 MG, four cylinder. You're very late. And sometimes she glitches. She'll get us there in style though. What the fuck is the point of this scene? Is this car super important to the story? No, we literally never see it again. Is it to establish a foundation of a relationship between these two characters that will be relevant for the rest of the- Nope, he dies in episode two. This is such a shit introduction to these characters, and nearly every moment we spend with them fails to display them as intimidating and mysterious, and more so petty and incompetent. Sorry. I mean, if that's what they were going for, well done I guess, but it seems to clash with how seriously you want us to take them in the later episodes. There is quite a lot of that, actually. Uh, having scenes where there's this huge clash between how things have been established and how they actually present the scene. Grant uses his sharp wits to finesse a key to the room he wants to steal Utopia from. Then he gets in and just starts dancing to Hood Go Crazy. Haha, <laughs> yeah, look at him jump around. White girls go crazy. Black girls go crazy. We're meant to believe they're trying to stay hidden, but they go to a funeral in tracksuits, yell about being with Jessica Hyde, and shop for new clothes at Goodwill. There's a disconnect here. We're meant to believe the comic was drawn by a scribbling schizophrenic, but the artwork is super clean. I don't believe this was scrawled by a madman, because it looks like you just commissioned a talented artist to draw the comic for you. This style makes no fucking sense for the context of who you want us to believe is drawing it. We're meant to believe Jessica wants to kill Artemis quickly, but then starts with strangling her even though she has a gun. What, is she bulletproof? Use the gun. Just sh shoot, her, shoot her in the fucking head, like it'll be real quick, what's wrong with you? Oh man, isn't this fight scene so cool? No. No it's not. Uh, it's hammy and unnecessary. It only makes me hunger for the original scene that this is so clearly playing off. I will always take the tense and engaging scenes from the original over the unnecessary fight scenes from this garbage. 
And God, do these characters suck. They have the same depth and character dynamics as the victims in Saw 2. That's bad. Do you understand? I understand what you're saying. <laughs> so now understand what I'm saying. I'm going to go now. Go. You don't understand. Pull the fucking trigger if you Ian, want! Ian, no, 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 Ian, no, 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 no. stop! Please, please! I promise this will be okay. Please! All of the characters are basic, and the actions they take throughout the series have no effects on their psyches at all. Alice is sad for a minute that her mum is dead and she just murdered someone else, but then they jump on a bed to some music, and now she isn't sad for the rest of the series. Pretty much nothing about any of the characters is notable, they're all one note and boring to watch. The performances range all the way from stilted to irritating with almost no exceptions. Just look at what they did to my boy Wilson. We're just a mass assemblage of data points collected online and then aimed back at us, you know? Buy this car, gift this tchotchke, elect this president. You know, and if you feel bad about all the stupid shit that you buy, throw a few bucks at a foundation, save the planet, help the kids, that should make you feel better, right? But then you go back to buying the same shit over and over again because not forbid to make you get out of your little creature comfort zones and fucking trans fats and bump stocks and avocado fucking toast. Ian and Becky are instantly in love as soon as they meet each other. This relationship is not grown naturally and it is not tested at all. There's no bumps in the road for them, and at the end, Ian pulls a ring out of nowhere. I actually have to talk about this ring scene real quick, because uh, it was fucking horrendous from beginning to end. So they want to destroy the shipment of the vaccine, so they drive their car over there and get inside using Kevin Christie's fingerprint. There's a lot of the vaccine, so it would make sense that they burn it all down, you know, like, uh, like in the original. But for some reason, they used all of their flammable liquids to blow up the car? Because, um... I guess they had spare budget, like don't really don't see what blowing up the car did. But they have some time at least because security can't get in because apparently no one but the CEO has the ability to access the storage facility. So they're like, oh shit, how will we destroy it all? And Grant goes, vroom vroom, and then this scene happens. <laughs> I cannot fathom the thought process that went into this scene. Ian then gives Becky a ring, and then pulls a Molotov cocktail out of his ass and throws it onto the pile. Oh fuck it, I hate, I hate the series so much. I hate it so much, like independent of it just being a poor remake of something I liked, this is just shit. The mystery and theme of the original series has been so dumbed down and bastardized, I am legitimately amazed that they managed to make something so terrible with such fantastic source material that was in the same format. I wake up in the middle of the night, take a piss, and there it is. I'm shaving and showering in the morning, there it is. I'm having relations of an intimate variety with a lady friend, and there it goes. Where's Jessica Hyde? In my original Utopia video, I mentioned that they better have something good to fill the extra episodes with instead of just stretching out the story. Instead, they removed elements of the story and stretched out what was left. I am outrageously salty. If this wasn't a remake of something I already knew about, I honestly wouldn't even be talking about it. Uh, it's a very half-baked reimagining with nothing compelling about the new stuff it added, with a presentation that honestly takes away from its subject matter. Judged on its own merits, it has a vaguely interesting twist that's not particularly well thought out and doesn't fit satisfyingly into the rest of the narrative, which itself is filled with one-dimensional characters with little to no watchability due to stilted performances and the fact that they're not given much to do anyway. I don't even know what to rate this show. Like, uh, if I had come across it without knowing anything about it, I would have stopped watching probably midway through the second episode. Just watch the original series, use a VPN and watch it on Amazon, I guess, or find some other way. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not the police. I'm sorry this review is so negative. Uh, I wish I had nicer things to say about this series because I really wanted it to be good. Dennis Kelly just released a new show. Cristobal did the score. Uh, I'm going to go watch that now. Also, I mean, it goes without saying, but the music. Going from the original to this. <laughs> Get the fuck out of here. Supersonic. <laughs>